Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Good to be with you. I know you missed me terribly the last couple of weeks, didn't you? So, but it's good to be with you this morning. Um, not too much in the way of family news, um, unless of course you're into the big quiz this Saturday. So, uh, if you're not um, booked into that and you want to come along, you better make sure you get in touch with Deb today or tomorrow. Um, other than that, you've got, um, I was about to say you've got the pew sheets, but I have to apologise because you haven't got the pew sheets, have you? So uh, we were a bit short on pew sheets this week, but I should make sure there's plenty here next week. My apologies for that. Um, apart from being my dear wife's birthday today, the 23rd of March, of course, uh, um, was the day that two years ago we went into lockdown, wasn't it? So uh, I wouldn't like to say it was the start of coronavirus, but it was, it was the start of its impact on all of us. Um, so I thought today, as well as our worship to Jesus, we might dedicate uh, this communion to those who didn't make it through the last two years because of corona. Um, and so as we begin, let's just have a moment of silence to, to lift those people to our Lord um, and then we'll start our service properly. So Father, we, uh, we thank you that we sit here today because of the grace that you gave us. Many of us haven't had COVID and come out the other side. And we know that there were many that did not. And so we thank you for our own lives. We lift you those who are left behind, who have lost loved ones to COVID. We lift to you those who have, have had their life impacted long term by COVID. And we continue to lift to you the many countries around the world that are still in the middle of suffering as we seek in this country to live with the existence of COVID. Would you bless those who it still impacts today. Amen. And so together we say our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, 
to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. As we come before our God in confession, we pause and reflect upon our own lives. So knowing our God is keen to forgive, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. Firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all as we confess together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And so, Almighty God, who forgives all, all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen. and as we're in the middle of Lent at the moment we skip over the Gloria and we come to the Collect our prayer of the week um, and so as ever a moment of silence for you to send your own prayer of thanks as I pray the Collect Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And to give us our first reading. First reading is taken from Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verses 5 to 9. See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully, for well, this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, surely this is a great nation, is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him. And what other nation is so great as to have such righteous degrees and laws as this body of laws I am setting before you today? Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them slip from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children, and to their children after them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Anne. Reading from chapter 5, start at verse 17. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, 
nor the least stroke of a pen will be any mean, by any means disappear from the law until it is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. They, those are slightly different, well, they are very different reasons to the ones that we had at the weekend. But, because at the weekend, uh, we had a, um, an altogether mission service where we looked at crisis, um, which is a, a charity for those who are homeless. And there are, there's some information at the back there about crisis. Uh, it was very well done by uh, Sue, a little bit of drama from Anne as well, so with her reading. Um, well worth checking into crisis, who are one of our mission partners. But those are the readings for Holy Communion today. So, you know, I'm getting very Anglican and choosing the lectionary readings today. Um, and as I read those this morning um, and reflected, I thought, well, it's the same old, same old message that I've been saying to you for the last four years as we approach our, my fourth year here, isn't it? We, we've got these laws that are... Um, that the Jewish people were keeping. Um, it, the question is, do we keep these laws or not? Well, the answer probably is that we should keep many of them, I'm sure. But um, as I've been saying for the last four years, Jesus says, you know, here, he says, don't assume that any of the old laws are gone. He says, you know, until everything he is there, until he has accomplished everything. Elsewhere in other translations it talks about until everything is fulfilled and basically what Jesus is saying as we know um, is actually he is the fulfillment of the laws and then he tells us actually the greatest of the laws is to love God and love people doesn't it which makes it simple for us doesn't it if we do that we will we will watch out for all the other laws and many people, many people will look at Christianity and say, oh, you've just you know, taken the easy road. But actually, when you think about it, I don't know how you feel, but I don't feel like loving people most of the time. <laughs> you know, when, I'm, when I'm tired and worn out, actually to love people as Jesus would love people is by far the hardest thing to do, isn't it? Nevertheless, that's what we're called to do. And uh, if we don't, I think we just make a mockery of Jesus hanging on the cross, really, don't we? So, my friends, as we go out this week, I guess we need to figure out who we need to love a bit more. Maybe, maybe like me, you've had some, you know, some trouble loving individuals this week. Well, this is just a call once more to remember what Jesus did for you and I and to try our best to love them as we would love God. Let's um, turn to our creed. I'll remain standing on your behalf if, you were, if you'd like to remain seated. And let's declare our faith in the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession. And as ever, I shall leave some space for you to lift your own prayers as I pray for our world, our country, our parish, and those we love. Let's pray.
Farmer, uh, uh, our mind cannot help but go straight to Ukraine when we consider our world. And so we lift all those in Ukraine to you. The Ukrainian people, we lift you and ask for you to protect them, provide for their needs, give them peace. We pray for the Russians as well, Lord, because as we know, many are confused about what's going on, why they're there, scared as in. We pray that they will have the courage to, uh, to do what needs to be done. And we pray that Putin's heart will be turned away from this violence. Seems much like Pharaoh, his heart is hardened right now, Lord, but we pray that your spirit will intervene. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you our country hearing of the uh, the impact of rise of fuel prices on uh, families this morning the increase in those needing the food bank not just those without employment but those who are employed but struggling to survive and we lift all of those to you which you provide we pray we ask for those who are struggling with debt to have the courage to step out to ask for help As the Chancellor stands up today, Lord, we know the news he will deliver will most likely impact more people. And so we pray for a change in these circumstances. Like those who have more, help those who have less, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit, we bring before you this area that you would have us minister in. We lift you our streets in which we live. We pray for insight beyond our human understanding to those around us, that we might be friend and, and pray for. We thank you for the movement in the refurbishment of St Nicholas's and we pray uh, that when those men and women come to do the work, we might be witnesses to them. We pray for more of your help in raising the money needed for that, that you would guide us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we bring before you, Father, those requesting your healing power. We think of our own Anne and thank you for the recovery that she's beginning to show. We pray for strength. We want to see her here again, Lord, and we pray that you will bless her this morning. We lift to you those we personally know who need your healing power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we know that simple message though it is to love you and to love people. 
We know at times it's difficult. May we be gracious to all. May we be thankful for your love of us and forgiveness of us. And may you guide us in who we should reach out to. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Love and Father, we come before you to celebrate what Jesus did for us, how you sent him for us. But we also lift this communion to you this morning as we remember those who have not made it through the last two years because of COVID. May all we say and do be worshipped to you and may you send your peace on those who remain. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, Born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. And he put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. 
So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, May praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. And so, my friends, draw near with faith and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared, we were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. the body of Christ, broken for all God's people, I receive on behalf of all God's people. Amen. The
the blood of Christ shed for all God's people, I receive on behalf of all God's people. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say our prayer of thanks together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I hope you'll join me for a drink afterwards. But for now, the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.